The tourism and hospitality sector is one of the most coronavirus stricken sector in the globe. The government of Ethiopia has been providing finance for businesses in the tourism sector to help them stay afloat. According to the Ministry of Tourism, the sector remained intact despite challenges posed by the coronavirus pandemic. Ethiopia leads the continent in the number of cultural and intangible heritage inscribed on UNESCO World Heritage List. This immense tourism potential has been challenged by the corona pandemic over the past year, forcing the government to provide financial support for actors in the sector to stay afloat. <laughs> The government has been providing financial support, including loans, through revised policy frameworks to make business in the hospitality sector stay afloat. They have been able to keep their employees and withstand the impact of the pandemic. The domestic business has also been functioning well, allowing hotels to remain active. The tourism sector remained intact despite challenges. President of Ethiopian Tourism and Hotel Management Association, Getahon Alamu, for his part, said his association is working hard to boost the tourism market in the country, creating linkages internationally. This association has 3,000 members. There are similar associations in Kenya, Tanzania, and South Africa. We are integrating with hospitality professional associations in the United Kingdom to attract foreign market into Ethiopia by increasing our market share. Over 200,000 foreign tourists have visited Ethiopia over the past 12 months and the country aspires to generate more foreign currency as Ethiopia has debuted as one of the top 10 countries that would be frequented by tourists after the corona pandemic. It's like the Ethiopian Canberra drum, I came in playing the Ghanaian dondo to represent the unity in Africa. We can never talk about unity without talking about Ethiopia. Welcome to Addis Ababa, the home of the African Union and the capital town of Ethiopia. Two great men, Osajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah and the Emperor Haile Selassie I were very instrumental in the formation of the Organization of African Unity, now known as the African Union. These two understood that together we stand, divided we fall. May the souls of this great Pan-Africanist go marching on. Tonight, I am going to be taking you through a cultural, historic, and insightful tour through Ethiopia. When you come to Ethiopia, there are sites that you might want to visit, some of which include the Simeon National Park, with its high peaks, deep valleys, and sharp precipices, stretching over 1,500 meters. You might also want to visit the ruins of Aksum, which represents the heart of ancient Ethiopia, when the kingdom of Aksum was the most powerful between the Eastern Roman Empire and Persia. You might also want to visit Tia, which is an archaeological site in the center of Ethiopia, south to Addis Ababa. Ethiopia prides itself in its diverse landscape and rich culture which is why you might want to visit so many cities in Ethiopia, some of which include Addis Ababa, Mabel, Landivela, Gonda, just to mention a few. Ethiopia, being the second most populated country in Africa, is the only country that has never been colonized by the West. The Italians tried to create a colonial crack on Africa through Ethiopia, but were defeated at the Battle of Adura. They hid on the hills looking down at the valleys of Adura with their guns, bows, and arrows and defeated the Italians. Did you know that Ethiopia is the only country with a 13 calendar system? What does this even mean? This means that when everybody else in the world has 12 months in the year, there are 13 months in Ethiopia. This is why I'm seven years younger, because while all of you are in the year 2021, it is still 2014 in Ethiopia. Interesting, isn't it? In fact, yesterday, September 11th, was a new year in Ethiopia. Malcolm 
Sudan rejected four benchmarks proposed by the United Nations Secretary General to the Security Council to assess the 